Good morning and welcome to St. Peter. Just a reminder to please silence all cell phones and electronic equipment before we begin Holy Mass. And also as a reminder that our musical program and the readings of the day can be found on our website. You are allowed to use your phones during Mass. Please stand for our opening hymn. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Good morning. It's a beautiful day, isn't it? You didn't answer me on that one. Every day is a beautiful day, even though it's cloudy, a little chilly today. But look at the nice crowd we have here at Holy Mass today. We're beginning to fill up our church like in pre-COVID days, which is certainly an enjoyable for us to see, isn't it, John? Yes, it is, sir. I knew John would agree with me. <laughs> John always agrees with me. Glad you're with us today as we celebrate this 30th Sunday in Ordinary Time in the Universal Church today. We'll all hear the same readings all around the world. We welcome you live stream that are watching from here and around the world uh, at our Holy Mass at St. Peter today. So now let's put ourselves in the presence of God today, bow our heads in prayer. As we pray for healing where we need it today and forgiveness where we need to receive it from a brother and a sister in a gracious way or offer it to them graciously as, G as God does with us and that we might share unity at the Lord's table. Lord Jesus, teacher of justice, Lord have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, bearer of mercy, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, prince of peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God heavenly.
with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, increase our faith, our hope, and charity. Make us love what you command, so that we may merit what you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, you shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan. If ever you wrong them and they cry to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up, and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows, and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors among my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset, for this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior, you who gave great victories to your King and showed kindness 
to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we were among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. 
That's the first commandment. The second is like it, Jesus says. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The scribe, a very sincere man who asked Jesus this question, asked the question of many rabbis and teachers. The scribes and the lawyers would ask the same question. Could you take the 613 commands of the law of Moses and the Torah and reduce them down to one? Or could you take the one and expand all sorts of rules and regulations off that one? So here the lawyer, the scribe, asked the ultimate question. What's the greatest of all the commandments of the 613 commandments in the Torah? What's the greatest one? And Jesus boils it down to one. True to his listening skills that this lawyer learned in therapy class 101, he repeats Jesus' words to show that he got the message and was really listening to him. Jesus is very pleased with what he, that the man heard him and understood him. And the incident ends. Class dismissed. And there it is, the teaching ever enshrined as the ultimate teachings of Jesus in the scriptures, in the gospels, in our liturgy. And we know it in our head. If you asked any of the kids at school, they know that's the ultimate commandment of Jesus. But the truth is, that commandment needs to be enshrined in our lives. It needs to get into our, he our hearts into a way of living, because the gospel only lives in our heart, not our head. So you have to listen to this with your heart, Jesus says. I want to go back 50 years or more to an incident that happened in history, in our American history, in our world history. It was the court-martial of the My Lai massacre in Vietnam. You remember that incident? You're old. I'm old enough to remember it. Some of you are not. But Lieutenant John Kelly was the man accused of the massacre of innocent Vietnamese civilian villagers, and he's testifying at his court-martial trial 50 years ago, I guess now. And he said this, an enemy I could not see, I couldn't feel, I, I couldn't touch. Nobody in the military system ever described the enemy except as anything but a communist. They didn't give it a race, they didn't give it a sex, they didn't give it an age. Anonymous, faceless life is cheap. Except for that double-edged commandment of Jesus today, love of God and love our neighbor, which demands a face, which demands a race, a gender, and an age, and a creed. In short, acknowledgement of the other as the neighbor, a brother and a sister in the Lord Jesus. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you love God, you will love your neighbor as yourself. Here's my own failure in this matter. Brought home to me years ago when I was at St. Francis Borgia in Washington, Missouri. In that town, there was a physically disabled man who would always be at the entrance of the Walmart store there in Washington town. The man had no legs below the knees, and he would sit at the entrance to the Walmart as you walked in. I didn't go there real often, but I went there often enough to Walmart. He would get there in his wheelchair, and with powerful upper body strength, he would lift himself out of the chair and onto the ground. He did this in winter and summer. He had a large plastic cup he placed beside him. And every time I went in and out of there, I would give him something. Loose change. I mean, it was never dollar bills and things. It was loose change. And I felt pretty darn good about myself that I did that, but I never knew his name. One day I was approaching this store, and there are the man's there, he's always there. 
and I saw a woman squatting down next to him and talking with him in great animation. As I turned to go into the store, I heard her say, so you haven't lived in Franklin County very long, hmm. And she was inquiring about his life, caring for him in a very personal way. He was a person for her, not just the beggar at the Walmart store. And the money that he later tossed into the cup somehow seemed then very impersonal, even demeaning. All those times that I realized I never saw him as a neighbor. He was the beggar. I never knew where he was from. I didn't know his name, nor did I ask ever who he was or anything about him. He was an object. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you love God, you will love your neighbor. And here's a story from Guideposts. A woman tells this story. I'm a 46-year-old woman, divorced, three grown children. After several months of chemotherapy following mastectomy for breast cancer, I was starting to put my life back in order. When my doctor called me with the results of my last checkup, they had found more cancer, and I was devastated. My relatives had not been that supportive. I was the first person in my family ever to have cancer, and they didn't know how to behave in front of me. They, they tried, but I had the feeling they were afraid that I was contagious. They were afraid of me, it was strange. They'd call me on the phone to see how I was doing, but they kept their distance, and it really hurt. And I remember doing that with a woman I knew in Crestwood who got cancer, and I just kind of felt distance, and she called me on it. So this lady said, last Saturday I headed for the laundromat. You see the same people there almost every week, she said. We exchange greetings, we make small talk. So I pulled in the parking lot, determined not to look depressed that day, but my spirits were really low. When taking the laundry out of the car, I looked up and saw a man there, one of the regulars, leaving with his bundle. He smiled, he said, good morning, how are you today? And she said, I suddenly lost control of myself and I blurted out, terrible. This is the worst day of my life. I have more cancer. And I began to cry. He put his arms, he put his clothes down, he put his arms around me in the parking lot and just let me sob. Then he said, I understand, I understand, he said. My wife has been through it too. It's worse the second time. After 15 minutes, I felt better. I stammered out my thanks. I went back into the laundry place. Fifteen minutes later, here he comes back with his wife. Without saying a word, she walks over to me and hugs me. Then she said, tell me who you are. I've been there before. Feel free to talk to me. I know what you're going through. I can't tell you how much that she said it meant to me. Here was this total stranger taking time out of her life to give me emotional support and courage to face the future when I was ready to give up. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you love God, you will love your neighbor. You'll get to know that person by name. When I was at St. Elizabeth in the Crestwood, my first assignment as a baby priest, I took our youth group to Appalachia one summer for two weeks. People thought I was crazy. I think I probably was. It's 1973, a year after I was ordained. We took a Greyhound bus there. And when we came home on the bus, parents picked us up and brought us back to the parking lot. And we all got out of the cars, and there's a bunch of teenagers there in that parking lot, part of our youth group. They got out their bedrolls and their paraphernalia and they looked scruffy. They looked like refugees, we did. The kids were dirty and smelly and messed up. So was I. We were a sad looking bunch, but they were my kids. We had just returned from Appalachia. 
We work with Father Ralph Biding from Lancaster, Kentucky in his Appalachian, Christian Appalachian Project in Eastern Kentucky. We help people clean up and repair their homes, clear out tons of debris, worked in a rummage store, repaired sewer lines, worked at the day camp for kids. I went street preaching with Father Biding. That's another homily way later when they threw tomatoes at me. Don't get any ideas, folks. They threw tomatoes at me. Another homily, another day. Now the kids were sitting on their bags waiting for their parents to pick them up. I said to the one of the boys, are you tired? He said, man, I am, I'm dead tired. I'm more than tired. But he added gospel words which I'll never forget. He then said, but this is the best tired I've ever felt. Why was it the best? Because he had loved his neighbor as himself and in knowing he had found God, he felt good about what he had done in these two weeks. Maybe that Persian proverb is really true that says, I sought my God, my God I could not see. I sought my soul, my soul eluded me. I sought my neighbor and I found all three. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If you love God, you will love your neighbor. You get the picture? Love of neighbor to be real can't be from a distance or only words are safely anonymous. It has to have a race, a sex, an age, a creed, a face, and a better name. An acknowledgement of the other as a neighbor, a brother and a sister in the Lord. The commandment today has to come from the heart. It has to be personal. Maybe one of the problems I read in magazine, in, in America Magazine just this week, an editorial, that we're not even knowing our neighbors anymore, who they are, who are the people who live right around us by name. Who are they? What, what about them? We're losing that sense of getting into people's lives in a neighborly way. In the Pope's recent encyclical, Fratelli Tutti, Pope Francis identifies the plague of political polarization and the collapse of genuine public discourse as the prime reason for a failure to respond to the moment of being neighbors to one another. We should read Fratelli Tutti. Francis warns, and I quote, things that until a few years ago could not be said by anyone without risking the loss of universal respect can now be said with impunity in the crudest of terms even by some political figures. In our country today, have we lost our moral compass of reverence and respect for each other? And that's the bottom line of the Ten Commandments, folks. The first three is reverence and respect for God. The last seven, reverence and respect for each other. And then Jesus boils it down to two. Love God and you got to love your neighbor as yourself. It's the kerygma teaching of Jesus today. It's the bottom line. It's we all know in our head. we got to get it into our heart. That Russian proverb, that P Persian proverb, I sought my God, and my God I could not see. I sought my soul, my soul eluded me. I, found, I sought my neighbor, I found all three. Amen, St. Peter?
Let's stand now and profess our faith. <laughs> I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And let us pray. Jesus reveals that to love both God and neighbor completely is to fulfill the law. Seeking to keep this law in word and deed, we lift up our prayers to the Lord of life. For Pope Francis, that the loving commitment which he shows towards widows, orphans, refugees, immigrants, the poor, and the needy, will convert world leaders to welcome strangers free of all oppression, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the right of all citizens to vote be encouraged and facilitated by those who oversee an unbiased electoral process, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For greater legal controls over the high interest rates of predatory lenders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Respect Life focus for October is on prison ministry, that prisoners who are Christ witnesses inside the prison system may be kept safe from harm while being his voice to the other prisoners, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our families, that we may appreciate the blessings that family life imparts, cope with the irritations it sometimes brings, and remember those we have loved who have died and gone to God, we pray to the Lord. For people struggling with long-term effects of COVID-19 and those who are sick or anxious for any reason, May they receive God's grace and be at peace as they recover, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, especially Martha Smith, mother of Lynn Lang, and Joan Albin, mother of Lynn Albenmeyer, and for those who have no one to mourn for their death, May they soon be welcomed into the fullness of the kingdom. We also honor our St. Peter Parish family for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. Lord God, to love you with all our heart, all our soul, and all our mind, we must love our neighbor as ourselves. Show us the depth of your love. Strengthen our faith in this moment, in moments of doubt. We pray this the only way we can, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Remember, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise the Look, we pray, O Lord, on the offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of this cross, he freed us from an unending death and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray upon your people's offerings and pour out upon them the gift of your spirit, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have become your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed him over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, they become the lasting sign of your covenant with us. He desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took the bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and he broke the bread and he gave it to his disciples gathered with him. He said, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, knowing he was about to reconcile all things in himself by the blood of the cross, he took the chalice, filled with the fruit of the vine. Once more he gave you thanks and praise, and he gave the chalice to his disciples at table. He said, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus Christ, your Son, who was our Passover and our lasting peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming again. We offer you, who are faithful and a merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles us to the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake, partake in this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered as one body of Christ who heals all of our divisions. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Archbishop. Lord, help us work together for the coming of your kingdom here until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, and with all of our deceased sisters and brothers, whom we humbly commend to your mercy at this Mass. Then freed at last from the wounds of corruption and division, we may be, be fully into the new creation and sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare now to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. By the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin, safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace. My peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Oh, God, you 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. And blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed. For those watching the live stream, we pray the prayer of spiritual communion today. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you've already come and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Gather at 
Let us pray. May your sacraments, O Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in signs, we may one day possess in truth through Christ our Lord. Amen. I have three announcements that I'd like to share with you before we depart Holy Mass. <clears throat> this weekend is World Mission Sunday. Please help to support the priests, religious sisters and brothers, and lay catechists who provide loving service to those most in need all throughout the world. Please be generous by using the Society for the Propagation of the Faith envelope found in your weekly contribution packet. The Knights of Columbus will be selling Tootsie Rolls after Mass this weekend. All proceeds go to Knights of Columbus Development Center at Cardinal Glennon Children's Hospital, as well as other local charities for disabled individuals and families. And finally, uh, the Little Flowers of St. Peter, a wonderful parish organization, will be selling Advent candles after each Mass next weekend. Thanks in advance. Thanks for coming to Mass, everyone, today. Enjoy this wonderful Sunday. Be safe, be healthy. Enjoy one another's company today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May God bless you today, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. You are sent out glorifying the Lord by your life. as you